It is not our job many times to do absolutely anything but just to believe. To believe. It is your job to believe. It is my job to believe. It is God to make it happen. It's his job to make it happen. So I ask you to release all control. Let God work in your life. Be still and know that he is God, that he is in control, and that he is on the throne. We are in the presence of God. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is healing. There is salvation. And we believe that the atmosphere changes right now because he is here. The atmosphere is changing now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. As we know it, the evidence is all around. That the Spirit of the Lord is here. How many believe that? The atmosphere is changing. My atmosphere is changing right now, my mentality, my mood, because the Spirit of the Lord is here. And the evidence is all around. The evidence is all around. The Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord is here. Overflow, overflow in this place. sin that we may be carrying over our lives or we may be struggling with the word of God says if we confess our sins he is faithful and just and will forgive will forgive our sins and purify our unrighteousness do you believe that you know sometimes we need to say Holy Spirit bring to mind what it is that I need to change what it is that's in my heart that is offending you can we do that right now because where there is a life of repentance, we live a life of fruitfulness. We want to be fruitful in the presence of God. Amen? So we have to live a life of repentance every day, even if we don't know that we've offended God. Come on, sing it. Fall fresh on me in this morning.
your hands with me and surrender, saying, God, I need you. I can't do this without you. God, I am no good without you. You are all the goodness that I have. And you are all that we need, oh Jesus. And this morning, we open our hearts to you. We open our minds to you in this morning, our God. And we surrender. We surrender all our worries, all our cares, my depression, my anxiety, my worries. Whatever I'm worried about for tomorrow, God, it's in your hands. Because you are in my tomorrow. You are in my future. You are working and you are making a way. sing that bridge again
the storm. If he's seen you through that storm, really give him that hand praise today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. God a hand praise one more time. Let's, let's give God a real hand praise. Let's give him a real hand praise one more time. For God is good, church. God is good. And all the time. Wow. You know, this, this whole week I was, you know, as I was, you know, preparing you know, and asking the Lord, you know, Lord, you know, what is it that you want me to speak about? You know, I just, I, I felt, I felt, I'm like, you know, I, I texted past, I was like, Pastor, like, I, I just feel like God's got, like, the Lord, I mean, he's here. He's always here. He's always with us. But I just felt today, like, I just felt like the Lord's going to do great things. Amen. The Lord's going to do great things. I, I thank the worship team for that beautiful, that wonderful worship, you know, for bringing us to his throne this morning. Could we give a hand praise to that worship team? Thank you. Thank you for all your work. So hello, Grace Point. Good morning. How's everyone doing today? Thank you all for coming today. Uh, those online, our, our Grace Point um, online family, thank you for joining in. You're such a huge part of this Grace Point. Thank you for your commitment. And um. I, we love you. You know, I, I don't know if, I, I don't know if you could tell, I'm so pumped. I was like, when I first, like the whole week, I was so pumped. I'm so excited. I'm like, you know, and seeing everyone and what God's doing in this church. Like God's doing amazing things, right? We have, you know, new leaders stepping up in the connection groups, which they're doing an amazing job. Yes. Can we give a hand praise to the Lord for that? You know, hearing from testimonies, God giving visions, and, and God speaking, like, I, that brings me so much joy when I get to hear, like, someone say, you know, God gave me this vision, or God spoke to me. It's like, wow, amen. Like, that, it motivates me. It pumps me up. So today, so this month, we're going to be uh, talking about stepping out of the boat, right, stepping out of the boat. And I'm excited. I'm so excited. Like, I, I was like, I couldn't wait. I'm like, man, I can't wait till Sunday comes around. Like, what God has spoke to me, I want to share with you. So I couldn't wait. So stepping out of the boat. So today we're going to go on a boat ride. And today we're going to walk on water. But it's not literally, right? It's not physically on a physical boat ride. So if anyone's, you know, motion sickness, don't worry. We're not going to go on a physical boat ride. 
I'm going to share with you, I want to share with you this famous story, some of us have heard it, of when Peter walked on water with Jesus. Right? It's a famous story, very famous story. And Matthew, let's, let's turn, if you have your Bibles, if not, you could, uh, I'll have the verses up. In Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 23, is where that story is found. So let's take a look. Immediately, he directed the disciples, he meaning Jesus, directed the disciples to get into the boat and go ahead of them to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, while he sent the crowd away. After he dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. But the boat, by this time, was already a long distance from the land, tossed and battered by the waves, for the wind was against them. So that's speaking about the disciples. When the disciples saw him, and it was in the fourth watch of the night, around 3 to 6 a.m., Jesus came to them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. And he said, it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately he spoke to them saying, take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. Peter replied to him, Lord, if it is really you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, he said simply, right? Come. So Peter got out of the boat and he walked on water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the effects of the wind, he was frightened. And he began to sink, and he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus entered. Immediately, Jesus extended his hand and caught him, saying to him, Oh, you of little faith, why do you doubt me? Why do you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. The wind had stopped. Then those in the boat worshipped him with awe-inspired reverence, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. So Jesus, right, Jesus had finished performing a miracle. Jesus had just finished performing a miracle. A miracle. He was feeding a crowd of 5,000 before this happened, right, with only two pieces of fishes and five loaves of bread. So he tells his disciples, right, he tells his disciples, like, all right, I want you guys Go on the boat. Go on ahead of me. Right? You guys go on ahead of me. And go around in front of me to the other side of the sea. Right? Because he wanted to, you know, he needed, he just finished ministering, you know, before that, his, his cousin John the Baptist died. So he just, you know, it was a tragedy, right? He just lost a family member. So, you know, he needed some time for himself, you know, to go up in the mountain and pray with his father. So after he sent that crowd home, right, he goes up to the mountain to pray. But meanwhile, back at sea, a storm started rising up. Waves were crashing in on the waves were crashing up against the boat. Strong winds were hitting. Now, I want you to understand that they weren't on no carnival cruise, right? This wasn't a big carnival cruise. This wasn't the Titanic. This wasn't a, a, a million dollar yacht, right? This was just a simple small boat. This boat carrying the disciples, battered, right? Being battered by the waves and fighting the winds. So on about, about 3 to 6 a.m., Jesus comes to them. He didn't come by another boat, right? He didn't come rowing on another boat. He didn't come on a raft. He came walking on water. Like literally walking on the water. Some of the disciples, right, they saw him, they, 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 could see, they could see this, and they're like, what is that? It's a ghost, right? They were afraid. So just imagine, right, just let's, let's imagine ourselves, right, being caught in a storm, out in the sea, and you see this person in the distance, 
just walking on water, right? Not on a boat, not coming on a helicopter, just walking on water. That's pretty scary. Like, I'm going to be real with you, church, right? In the mornings, right? I got to admit, in the morning, right, I wake up, I go to work about 5, 5.30, so it's still really, really dark out. And those that have been to my house, they know that it's super dark where I live. They don't believe in streetlights where I live, okay? <laughs> so it's really dark, right? So I want you, so I want you to picture this, right? I want you to picture me waking up in the morning. It's 5.30 in the morning. You know, you're not really up yet. You're kind of like still like, like, you know, drowsy and sleepy still. Waking up in the morning. And it's like a good distance so where, from where I live. Like, this is where, where my door is. And my car, it's a pretty good distance. It's not like a mile or a quarter mile, right? But it's a, it's a good distance away. So it's really dark. You can't see nothing. So picture this. I have a light. I have a sensor light above my garage. And that turns on every time there's, uh, every time there's movement, it turns on. So just picture me, right? Picture me trying to wave at that and trying to like throw stuff, throw rocks or something at it just to turn it out so it could be dark, dark, so it could be light out, right? Now don't judge me. Yes, I'm afraid, and you will be too if you're surrounded by woods and you hear these strange animal noises all night, all right? So you would be too. So I want you to picture that, right? I'm just there. And even with that light on, I'm. Right? I'm walking as fast as I can to that car. Right? And you know what's crazy? That it's not a far distance, but because the fear, right, that I have, the fear just, it makes it look like, man, this is like a mile away. That's that's far. So don't judge me. All right? Don't judge me. I know, and you know what? Some of us, I know some of us are afraid of the dark. Some of us are afraid, you know, of these, like sometimes, you know, we, we, we like, oh, what was that, right? Like, oh, what was that? What was that noise, right? We, we panic sometimes, all right? I know I'm not the only one. I know I'm not the only one. So I really, I, in every morning, right, I know how the disciples felt, <laughs> right? They were scared, right? They're in the storm, right? They're in this storm, and the waves are crashing on their boat, and they see, like, this person walking on water. Like, how, that's crazy, right? So I know they they were very, very scared. So Jesus immediately says to them, don't be afraid. It is I. Take courage. You know, sometimes I wish I could hear the voice of God tell me that in the mornings. You know, when I'm walking, like, don't be afraid. Take courage. It's me. (laughs) So Peter tells Jesus, if it's really you, right, Peter, and, and if the, Peter's character, he was really bold. Peter was very, really, like, daring. He wasn't really, like, that person, like, all right, if it's you, all right. Bet. It, yeah, bet, <laughs> right, bet, right? If it's really you, let me come and walk on water, too. Wow, so daring, right? So bold, so bold. So Jesus tells Peter, okay, Come. So Peter starts getting out of the boat, right, and he starts walking on water. So Peter, Peter's, right, Jesus says, come. So imagine Peter, Peter didn't dip his, his big toe first to see if the water was cold or not. You know, he didn't go, ooh, I don't know, it's cold, right? Peter steps out of the boat. He steps out of the boat. He's like, whoa, I'm not sinking. And he walks on water. But something happens. As soon as Peter takes his focus off of Jesus, he starts noticing the winds and the storm. And so as soon as Peter steps out of the boat, and he's good for that moment, right? He's good. He's like, oh, yeah, Jesus. And all of a sudden, he he hears winds and the waves crash in. As soon as he takes his focus off, he starts to sink. So Jesus, so, so he starts crying out to Jesus, Jesus, save me, save me, I'm going to drown. Save me, I'm going to drown. I need help. So Christ comes over, right? Jesus comes over, and he extends his hand, and he picks, he, he grabs, like, you know what? Je- Jesus is a strong dude too, right? Just to pick up a, a, a just, come here. 
grabs them right out of the water. Crazy. I mean, that's, that's crazy. A miracle. So they finally make it to the boat, and the winds stop. Amazing. That's my God. The winds stop. And they all start praising God, saying, you truly are the son of God. So there's many lessons we can learn in this story. Right? There's many lessons. But I want to share with you three lessons that the Lord taught me, that the Lord spoke to me in my heart. Jesus is not blind to or removed from our struggles. Miracles happen when you are willing to step out in faith. And faith requires focus. So Jesus is not blind to or removed to or removed from our struggles. In Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10 says, Do not fear anything, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Wow. Thank you, Lord. He assured, be assured that I will help you. I will certainly take hold of you with my righteous hand, a hand of justice, of power, of victory, of salvation. I love the Amplified version. Just breaks it. I love that. A hand of justice, power, of victory, and salvation. So we saw that Jesus sent the disciples away, right, by themselves, to then be caught in a storm. I have mentioned that before this, Jesus, you know, he had suffered a loss in his family. His cousin John the Baptist had died. And he still fed a crowd of 5,000. He still ministered to those in need. Sometimes we feel like, sometimes we feel like when we're caught in a storm, right, when we're caught in that storm... We feel like the waves crashing down on us. The winds just tossing us and throwing us all over the place. And they're just too strong for us to even stand. And that sometimes we feel like Jesus has left us. He has forgotten us. Let me tell you. Jesus, like I said, he suffered a loss in his family. And he still fed that crowd. He never turns away from the struggles of those he loves and forgets about those he called to serve. I'm going to say that again, church. He never turns away from the struggles of those he loves. So sometimes it may feel like, yeah, like, man, I feel like in this storm, like this, I, I I don't hear from you, Jesus. I don't see you. I don't feel you. But he's there. He never turns away. Just like he never turned away on the disciples. He came at the right time. At the right time. He gave his disciples a command. Go ahead. Right? He told them, go ahead. And he came in, but he came just in time to help. You know, this this right, this isn't the first time the disciples were caught in a storm. The first time the disciples were caught in a storm, Jesus was in there and actually in the boat with them. So they weren't alone. Jesus was sleeping in the boat. So the storm arose again. Waves are crashing, winds, and there everybody's panicking on that boat. And they run to Jesus. And they're like, Master, Master, like, how can you be sleeping in this time? We're going to drown. Don't you care? Like, man, you know how bold that is? Like, like, yo, Jesus, don't you care that we're going to drown? Right? So, parents, imagine your son or daughter going up to you and say, Mom, Dad, don't you care that isn't, you know, like, that's like a kind of like a disrespect, isn't it? Like, like, hold up, right? But Jesus was there. He was there on the boat with them. And what did Jesus do? Jesus woke up. Right, I could just, I, I like to go back in time, and I just like, like to imagine, you know, and like how that scene would look like, and I could just imagine Jesus waking up, and like, 
right? And just staring at them and you guys not learning the lesson here. All right. You know, gets up and he just tells the wind, stop. <laughs> and everything stops. Amazing. God, God is good. God is good. God has a plan to deliver us, to deliver you from the toughest storm. We, us, we just need to step out in faith. We need to step out of the boat and have faith and trust in Jesus. It's easy. It's so easy to become fearful right? and to lose faith when we're tired, we're frustrated, alone. It's so easy to lose, to lose our faith. But while the disciples, they were fighting to try to stay afloat in that storm, not only did Jesus pray, he saw their struggle. He never lost sight of those he loved. In one of the darkest hours of, of Israel's history, the prophet Jeremiah wrote that God knows the plans he has for us. There are plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Wow. Could it be that sometimes God's plan is for us, God's plan for us includes storms? Could it be? When Jesus met the disciples on the waves, he immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. I want to tell you, that, that, <clears throat> that word, I, like, that's powerful. Like, when he mentioned those words, he says, take courage. It is I. It's like having that sense of protection. It's like having that assurance, right? Like, that security of, wow, Jesus, I'm protected under you. Everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be all good. No doubt, don't worry. Be happy, Right? Every little thing's going to be all right, right? That's what God's saying. God's like, don't worry. It is I. Let's take courage, right? Let's step out of the boat in faith and take courage because it's, it's the great I am that's with us. Point number two, right? The lesson number two that, that God spoke to me, miracles happen when you're willing to step out in faith. So a journey, a journey on the boat across the sea that should have taken about an hour or two, at the most, lasted anywhere from 6 to 12 hours because of the wind and the weather. And by the time Jesus had met them on the, on the, on the water, they have reached the center of the lake. So can you imagine? Let's just can you imagine how tired they were? Like they're battling for hours, they're battling, they're rowing. They didn't they didn't have a, it wasn't a motorboat, right? They couldn't just like bang, crank that on and just bring, let's go, let's get out of here. No. They didn't have a motorboat. They didn't have no jet skis, no life raft or anything. They had to manually row. Okay? So can you imagine for hours them trying to battle right not only physical labor but also the the, the mental part of it right because you're they're scared for their lives like are we we're gonna die here out at sea and you know what really stuck out to me these disciples were skilled fishermen at that moment they couldn't rely on their own skills they needed someone to help them to get through the storm. Sometimes the greatest miracles in life happen when we're willing to step out on faith and surrender to God's power instead of relying on our own power. I'm going to say that again, church. Sometimes the greatest miracles happen when we surrender to God's power instead of relying on our own. And, you know, and I get it, you know, us as humans, we're like, you know, I got this. I got this. Right? We go through something like, you know what? Now, nah, I'm going to, I got this. I got this. Right? And can you just picture Jesus up in heaven? Be like, no, you don't. 
No, you don't. I got you. It is I. It's me. I'm the great I am. So let's rely more on Jesus and less on us. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11, says, By faith, even Sarah herself received the ability to conceive a child, even when she was a long past due the normal age. So pretty much she was elderly, and she, she conceived a child. Because she considered him, and him with a capital H. Every time you see that capital, that's talking about Jesus. So she considered him who had given the, her the promise to be reliable and true to his word. Wow. So you see, we don't rely on our own. Right? Sarah, it was funny because when, when the angel of the Lord came to Sarah and said, you're going to conceive, right? Sarah at first was like, yeah, okay, me. <laughs> Look at my age. Like, that's shut down, <laughs> right? This is, this, this is shut down. Right? She was relying on her, on, on her own. I'm like, this is, look at me. Like, I'm not, there's no way. Right? And God's like, mm -mm. rely on me. I have the power. Like, Jesus is amazing. Like, I was sharing with, with, with um, some of you, like, how amazing God is. Like, it just, like, it just blows my mind. Every day when I think about his greatness and, his, and the miracles that he, he, he did in the Bible and the miracles that he's doing in us, it's like, wow, Lord, only you. He is such a good, good God. And lesson number three, faith requires focus. So once Peter stepped out of the boat, he started to walk on the water. All right, so Peter, Peter's on the boat, right? And he's probably like, you know, he wasn't standing, right? The boat's shaking, and it's going all over the place, right? And so once Peter steps on the boat, like, he starts walking on the water. Starts walking. Keeping his focus on God. And he only walked on water because it was possible by the power of Christ. So as soon as Peter saw those winds, like we mentioned before, he was afraid, and he started to sink. So sometimes I wonder, man, couldn't Peter tread water? Didn't, know Peter, didn't, didn't Peter know how to tread water at least or something? Or couldn't like, he stay afloat? He didn't have a life jacket or something? Like, you know, they didn't have that back then. So he started to sink, crying out, Lord, save me. Soon as Peter took his eyes off of Jesus... His, he, as soon as he lost his focus on that, did his, that, that, on that person that said, don't be afraid, take courage, it is I, on the great I am, he started to sink. Same thing happens to us. Faith requires focus on Christ. When we set our focus on him, just like Peter did for that moment, we start to see miracles in our life. That only, and this is the thing, we start to see miracles in our life that only God can do. Right? And if only God can do, God transforms completely. Come on, there's no magic trick in the world that could walk on water. I mean, you see like magicians, they try to levitate and they do that trick and they levitate. I've never seen one ma magician try to walk on water. Because only God can do that. So when we start putting our focus on God, so it doesn't matter what storm you're going through today. It, does, you, it may feel like those waves are crashing in on your life. It may feel like you're sinking and you're drowning. Let's, let's shift our focus onto God. He is the only one, the only one, the great I am, that will see you through that storm. I don't know about you, but I want to walk on water, right? I, I, I want to step out of the boat in faith, and I want to say, God, I want to walk on water. I'm, I'm in danger in the boat. See, that's, that's the thing, right? Peter, right? I love, 
Peter knew. Peter was in danger. He was like, wait, wait, hold on. I'm in danger. And if he said, it is I, hold on. I, that, that voice, right, that voice, it is I, wow. I could just imagine as soon as, as, as Jesus said, it is I, it was just kind of like a boom, like a hit right, right into Peter. It's like, whoa. Oh, I want to get out now. Heck yeah, like, I'm in danger. I'm about to lose my life. A little side note. Jesus didn't say, Peter, come. He said, come. Right? He didn't specifically point, say, Peter, come. He said, come. So I started, I'm like, Lord, why? Right? When Lazarus died, right, Jesus specifically spoke his name. He said, Lazarus, come out. Specifically. Jesus was testing everybody's faith on that boat. Jesus just doesn't call one person. He's calling us all, church. He's telling us all to come. He's given us a command to step out of the boat and come to him and trust in him and have faith in him. So I, sometimes we say like, oh, you know, that's not for me or, you know, oh, that's, that's his calling or that's his calling or that. No. God is calling us all. He's saying, come. So will you step out of the boat, church, and trust and have faith in him? When we keep, in John, John 16, 33, says, I have told you these things so that in me, again, we have that capital M. Anytime there's a capital, it means it's talking about the great I am, Jesus. So that in me, you may have perfect peace. In the world you have, in this world we're going to have tribulation and distress and suffering. But be courageous. I love what he's, he's, he's given us. He's, he's given us a command. He's telling us, right? He's saying, you are going to go through tribulations. You are going to go through storms. You are going to be in a boat and then you're gonna, the waves are going to be crashing in. The winds are going to be coming. They're going to come. It's going to feel like you keep rowing and rowing and rowing in circles. Have you guys, have you guys ever been on a boat, by the way? And a, a rowboat? Right? And there's a certain, you have to really, like, you know, because if not, you're going to be going in circles. I remember the first time I went on a canoe, I was just in circles. I'm like, ah, I give up. I can't do this anymore, right? Just going in circles and circles and circles, right? So sometimes it's going to feel like that, church. Sometimes it's the, the storms are going to, you know, we get, the, they're going to be so big that we, we, we forget. But Jesus is saying, keep your eyes on me. It is I. Don't be afraid. Be, cur be courageous. When we connect to the true source of all peace, power, hope, and perspective. When we focus our storms, when we focus on our storms or the impossible circumstances, right? When we start focusing like on... on all the trouble around us, and this is, wow, this is super impossible. I'm never going to get out of this. The world becomes a terrifying place. And that fear, it can be. It's overwhelming. It, it overwhelms us. But faith, like hope or joy or peace, requires focus on Jesus. It, too, can be lost or shaken if not protected. You know, I, I, I love this word, surrounded, right? Surrounded. And our, our worship leader was saying, you know, we surround me with your love. You know, that song, surround me with your love, right? You know, surrounded is, like, mothers, have you ever, like, like, wow, I surround my child. Protection. I surround you know, uh, a couple months back, we talked about the walls of Jericho, right? And how, you know, they surrounded a city, right? Surrounded to protect. When we surround ourselves with the love of Christ, that's the protection he has on us, right? So when those storms come, when the waves come crashing in, and we're surrounded by his love, 
it's so much easier to have our focus on Christ. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 through 2 says, If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are, from, that are above, not on things that are here on earth. See, when we set our focus on the things of above, when we set our focus on God, on Jesus, and not on the things that are going around on us. And I'm not saying we're going to be ignorant to the problems, right? I'm not saying, you know, problems come and we're just kind of like, yeah, psh, whatever. God got, you know, right? I'm not saying we're not going to be totally ignorant. Because sometimes those storms are coming. Just like the storms the disciples went, that storm that disciples went through, Jesus was testing their faith. So sometimes the storm is part of God's plan to test our faith. So when we set it, we set the things on what's above. Everything else around us. How they say it's just Gucci, right? It's, like that. it's just Gucci. It's gravy. And all the time, he had been with Jesus, even Peter, one of Christ's closest friends. Or he was one of Christ's closest friends. Was still learning how to trust the Lord. Peter was still learning how to trust the Lord completely. Jesus uses this stormy experience to bring his followers to a fuller understanding of who he is as their God and King. He is the almighty Lord of the winds and of the waves. Like He tells the winds. Like I want to see you try in the middle of a hurricane and be like, yo, stop. Right? Let's see what happens. God when God speaks, you know what? That's, uh, that's incredible. When God speaks, even the winds must obey. Even the storm must obey. He is our lifeboat, right? God is our lifeboat. We can trust him to either claim the storm or to calm us. Although... Peter was sinking in fear. He calls out to the Lord. Save me. God loves to hear our cry. He loves to hear our cry for help. It means that we can't save ourselves. Peter, he helplessly cries out to the only one that could save him. This experience that the disciples went through reminds us that a lapse of faith is just only a stumble. The Lord is always near to raise us back to safety, to our feet. When we call to him for help. So church, let us step out. Let us step out of the boat. And when we do this, let's keep our eyes set on him, on the great I am, on that person that said, this is I. Let's shift our focus. Let's shift our focus on him. He promises us that he will be with us. And this is, you know, the Lord... The Lord, and he's, and this is speaking to me. I, I'm speaking to you guys, but he's, he's speaking to me right now. Like, I feel the presence of God right now. And, and since the start of this service, it's been amazing. Right? The Lord promises us that he will be with us, that the gates of hell will not prevail against us. Let's look at a promise that he gives us. And Isaiah chapter 43 verse 2 says, this, When you pass through the waters... When you pass through the waters, I, I will be with you. 
Again, the I, that great I am. And through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, now I'm not talking about you're going to go walk through fire now, right? We're talking about spiritually. You will not be scorched, nor will the flame turn to you, burn you. The Lord is telling us, church. So I don't know if you came here today with storms, feeling like the waves are crashing down on you. And those storms could be anything going on in your life. Those waves can mean anything going on, going on in your life that's just weighing you down. That's causing all this fear and all this distraction of not keeping our focus on him. Or I don't know if you're feeling like you're rowing and rowing and rowing in circles and not getting anywhere. If that's you today, church, the Lord is telling you. You are going to go through those waters. You are going to pass through those tribulations. You are going to go through that storm. But you're not alone. Christ is with you. Just like he was with the disciples, he is with us. That same God, right? This is not just a fairy tale. That same God that walked on water, that same God that allowed Peter to walk on that water for that moment, That same God that extended his hand when he was sinking and drowning, he is with you. Believe it, church. Believe that he is with you. He will see you through this storm. And I'm going to tell you something. After you go through this storm, you're going to be a whole lot stronger than you were. After, you're going to be, oh, yes, it's the best. So church, will you step out of the boat today in faith? Or do you want to stay in that boat? Do you want to be in danger in that boat? Or are we going to step out? Are we going to take that leap of faith, that step of faith? Are we going to step out and walk on the water with Jesus? Let's all stand to our feet. I feel, I feel God has talked to someone. You may be confused. You may be fighting with yourself, fighting with God, because God wants you to step out, out of that boat. But you might be scared. And I understand, right? It's, it is scary. The ocean is a scary place. It's it's scary. But God, God is calling you. That burning in your heart, that's God. He's calling you to step out of the boat. If you haven't gave yourself your life to Christ, if you haven't asked God, Jesus, to, to come into my heart, He's telling you today. He's telling you today, step out. Let go. Let's let go of God. Let, let go and let God. Right? Maybe that boat symbolizes for some of us. The comfortness. Oh, I'm good where I'm at. I'm, I'm a lot safer in the boat, even though the winds are coming. I'm a lot safer in the boat than I am out of the boat. Why do I want to get out the boat? There's sharks. There's, there's you know, I, I don't even know how to swim. So I'm going to stay in here. I'm going to stay in my comfort. God's telling you, no, not today. Not today. God is calling us, church, 
to step out. And not just to step out, but to step out in faith. To keep our focus in the great I am. You know? It's like, you know what? I'm going to step out. And as I'm stepping out of the boat, I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Right? The storms. Remember, church. The storms obey the great I am. The gates of hell shall not prevail over your life. Let's give God our everything. Let's surrender ourselves to God. Let's not be like Peter when he lost his focus and he doubted Jesus. Let's not doubt. And if, and if that's you today, if that's you feeling that doubt, you know, it's just like, I, I, how can I believe in something that I can't even see? Or how can I believe, like, everyone's, like, I hear about it, I hear about it, I, I don't see it. I don't hear from him. You know why? Because we're still on that boat. We're still on that boat. You know, may, maybe Peter, right? Peter told Jesus, like, okay, if it's really you, let me walk on that water. Right? Maybe he, he didn't believe, like, okay, this can't be. Like, because there's no way there's nobody that can walk on water. Maybe he didn't believe. You know, when he heard those words come, he took that leap of faith. It takes, it took faith. I want you to understand, it took a lot of faith to step out of that boat. And a lot of trust in him. Trust in him, church. Thank you, Lord. If that's you today, right? If, if, if church, if you're willing to step out in faith, and I know we have, we have social distancing. We, we're, we're in a pandemic, right? So I want you to come forward. If you're willing to step out in faith, if you're willing to step out of the boat, if you're willing to say, you know what, Christ? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my focus on you. I'm done living in my comfort. I'm done with this, Lord. No more, the storms are not going to be over my life anymore. I want you to step forward. Step up in faith. And we want to pray for you. And if you don't want to come up, it's okay. Raise your hand right there. And we will say, we'll pray for you. If you, if you don't know who Christ is, right? if you don't know who Christ is, if this is the first time that you're visiting, right, and you don't know who Jesus really is, and you want, and you want to allow him to come into your life, Raise your hand right where you are. Listen, this is a judge-free zone. Nobody's going to judge you. Christ is telling us, church, come. Come. Let's come to him. Let's come to Christ, right? The first person that we should run to is to God run to him run I'll tell you what if that was me if I was Peter my butt's running on that water I'm not walking I'm running to Jesus I'm sprinting out to him church I want you us to all let's all extend our hands and let's pray let's lift up a voice of prayer for all these people here. Thank you, Father. Lord, we give you thanks, Lord, for your word, Lord Jesus. We give you thanks, Lord, because you always come on time. Lord, thank you for speaking that word into our life, Lord Jesus. Thank you for giving us that assurance that you are the great I am, that you are there 
Thank you, God. Sometimes we feel, Lord. Sometimes we feel that you're not there. Sometimes, you know, we feel like you have forgotten us, God. But thank you, Lord, because I could see you walk on, an, on that water. We pray, Lord, right now in your name, Jesus. Lord, these people are willing to step out of the boat, Lord Jesus. They're willing to step out in faith, Lord, and walk on the water with you, Lord Jesus. Father God, I don't know what troubles they're going through, Lord, in their life right now. I don't know what storms are arising, Father, or what storms are about to arise, Lord. But right now, Lord, we ask you, Lord, take them by the hand, Lord Jesus. Take them by the hand, Father God. Lord, show them, Father. Show them that miracle. Show them, Father. Thank you for them, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God, because you are there. Thank you. You are here. Believe it. Those that are here up front right now on this altar, believe it. Believe that God is there. Believe that God is on that water. Believe that God is extending his hand to you today. And he's saying he's pulling you out of that storm. He's pulling you out of that water. Believe it. Thank you, Lord. Father God, thank you for your word. Lord, we pray for the Grace Point Church, Father God. We pray for all the ministries in this church, Lord Jesus. You know, all the stormy weathers, all the waves that are gonna that, that want to crash into to the ministries, to the ministry leaders, Father God. We pray, Lord Jesus, that we, we continue to keep our focus on you, Lord Jesus, and only you, Father God. So when those waves and those storms come, Lord, we're walking on that water with you. Give us the strength, Lord Jesus. Teach us, Father. Show us, Lord, what is your plan, Lord Jesus. May your will be done, Father, in this church. May your will be done in every single member, Lord. May your will be done, those that are watching online. If you're willing to step out in faith, write it. Write it on the chat. We want to pray for you. We want to continue to pray for you. That the Lord may see you through, through this stormy weather. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord.
every step of the way. You are in our storm. You are in our trials. You are with us in all moments. And we thank you, Lord, because we are victorious in you. Because you have already won our battle. So we declare that victory over our lives. Come on, let's sing that together. your hand with me this morning because I don't think we're done. God is here. His presence is so tangible and we are going to take advantage of that. Lord God, oh we worship you Jesus. We exalt your name Jesus. We understand and we proclaim that your name is above all names. You Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh who provides for us. Oh, we worship you today. 
we know you Jesus that God of miracle that Jesus of wonders can everybody say I know that Jesus I know that Jesus that is my Jesus oh hallelujah can we sing that together as a church as loud as you can oh hallelujah Giving us full access to him. We became his children. We became his sons and daughters. There's no veil stopping you, church, from reaching his presence today. There is nothing, at nothing, no sin, no mistake, nothing could stop you from his presence. Nothing. Regardless of what the world says or even of what our upbringing tells us. There's nothing you can do that can keep you from the love of God, that can keep you from his presence. And Jesus, we just want to thank you this morning. Thank you for your presence every Sunday. Thank you for, for welcoming us, Jesus, to you. Jesus, thank you for making us your children and never abandoning us. We thank you, Jesus, and we worship you. And we will leave here today understanding that what we are feeling right now is your presence and that we don't ever want to let it go we don't ever want to stop feeling it we will take this with us in our weeks to our jobs to our friends guys more people need to hear about what's going on here more people need to feel what what we're feeling here and if you love them you will tell them about it you will tell them about it that urgency we need it you know I'll share a very quick story my brother-in-law is not Christian and we were driving in the car the other day 
with my daughter Sophia we were in the car and she asked a question she says we were in my brother-in-law's house and he was singing and he's a rapper and my daughter asked is he Christian mommy when we left and in the car we Melvin and I told her no mama he's not Christian and she said why does he know it's almost like that urgency like what do you mean he's not Christian does he know what happens to people that are not Christians it's almost that urgency like why doesn't he know and that is that urgency that we all need to have for the people that we love they need to be here they need to be experiencing this and I pray the Lord puts that urgency in all of us for people that are not here amen amen, amen. you may have a seat thank you worship team we welcome you all to Grace Point Church if this is your first time here yeah, we're a little bit crazy, <laughs> but we're just crazy for the Lord and for his presence. And, and we, we will not, we will not, um, we will not take no for an answer. You know, we come here and we worship the Lord. So if this is your first time here, we welcome you. If this is your first time tuning in, we welcome you as well. You are part of our family. We understand because of the pandemic, we all can't be here together, but we know you're watching and we, we love you. You know, stepping out of the boat, the preacher said, we need to step out of the boat. And so today, I hope we all go home thinking about that. What does that mean for me? It may look different for all of us, right? Stepping out of the boat may be very different. <clears throat> and so stepping out of the boat for me may look a different way. And so let's leave today thinking about that. Perhaps it is stepping out of that fear and joining a connection group, right? And connecting with others. Perhaps is, you know, being a little more vulnerable. Perhaps is let me start praying a little more. Perhaps is let me serve. Let me do something a little more bold. You know, something that I love about Peter, Peter gets a lot of heat for drowning because Jesus tells him, oh, you of little faith, you know? But if there's anything I've learned from our pastor here is, I much rather be bold enough to walk in that water than be in the safety of the boat. Because where was everybody else? Everybody was in the boat. Right? At least Peter was walking. And then he, you know, fell off. And Jesus was like, oh, I gotcha. I'd rather do that. And I hope all of us would prefer a hundred times. If we fall, we know Jesus will pick us right up. But I'd rather do that than live my entire life in that boat, in the safety of that boat. Okay? So that's stepping out of, our, out of, our, um, out of the boat and stepping out of our comfort zone. Let's pray and ask God what it is that he wants us to do. Text us if this is your first time here. We, um, we have a QR code um, that you can scan if this is your first time here, even if it's online. We want to know about you. We want to know who's visiting the church. We want to know who's watching. We want to pray with you. We want to walk with you in whatever it is, that, whatever it is, right? If you want us to call, we'll call. If not, that's fine. We'll just pray for you. But just let us know that you are here. Um, again, we thank you for being here. Um, <clears throat> Thank you for your online giving and your online support. We, not anything, we wouldn't be able to do anything here without that. So we thank you for that. <clears throat> and we ask that you continue to do so. Um, I know last Sunday, the, the, some of the board members were up here and they were speaking to you about, we were being transparent with you and letting you know what's going on in the church and where do we want to go as a church? You know, we have a lot of plans. Jesus has a lot of plans for us, you know? but we can't do it on our own. So we are asking the church to step up in this way. And maybe this is a way to step out of the boat, right? Trust him with your finances. We ask that, um, that you consider donating to the church. <clears throat> so you can get, securely give by two ways. You can text the dollar amount with the word Grace Point to the number on your screen, 978-528-0300, or on our website, mygracepointchurch.org forward slash give. Again, we welcome you to give and to consider um, supporting our church financially. We have two, only two announcements today, two very important announcements today. The first one is that we have our prayer service this upcoming Tuesday, March 9th at 
p.m. It's going to be through Zoom, so no need to come to the church in the safety of your home. You can do that. And we really want you to join church. There's a lot happening in Grace Point. I don't know if you can feel it. I don't know if you can see it. But there's a lot happening, and you don't want to stay behind. We are praying for breakthrough as a church this year, and we're only going to get that breakthrough by prayer. The only way is by prayer. Because as we heard the preacher, storms are coming. We are actually still in the middle of a storm, right, this pandemic, and we don't know what's to come. The only thing we can do is pray. Pray and get strong in prayer. And when I mean strong in prayer is get used to it. That way, every time you go through something, that way anything comes up, your mind automatically goes to, I need to pray. I need to pray. But if we leave prayer for kind of like if I'm in the middle of the storm, that's my time to pray, even that prayer is going to be forced, right? So if we get used to prayer and being in the presence of the Lord... Anytime a storm comes our way, automatically, I need to pray and present this to my father. So let's pray together as a church. And then the last announcement is that if you're interested in serving and helping with the Spanish-speaking second service that we are going to start, our first planning meeting will be next Sunday, March 14th, after the service. Again, if you know anybody interested in the Spanish service, if you want to hear a little more, know how you can help and get involved, please come next Sunday after the service. Um, we have a QR code. You can scan that, learn more information, sign up to come, whatever it is, okay? We need your help. Remember, we're going places. Grace Point's going places, and we don't want to go without you. So in, in any way that you can help, get involved, get interested, and this is because um, this is part of our family, right? So that's it for announcements today, guys. Let us stand up. Let us pray as we leave here today. Father God, we thank you so much for your presence here today. We thank you, Jesus, for what you do, for what you're doing, for what you're still, what you're still doing and what you're going to do. Father God, we thank you for everything you've done for us and with us. Thank you for the word today. Thank you for encouraging us to step out of the boat. And stop living in the, in the safety of that boat. Lord God, there's so much that you want for us, but we have to step out and go get it. Bless us this week as we start this week. Bless connection groups throughout this entire week. Bless everybody that is joining. And if anybody here, Lord God, is, is contemplating and joining, please put the right person next to them to say, hey, come on, let's do it. Let's do this. Because we know that this is what you want for us. We want, you want connection with with us, but you also want us to connect with each other. So we worship you, we praise you, and we thank you so much in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have a good day, everyone. See you next week.